Actually, when I was in high school, um, there were a bunch of after-school classes that we could take um, for one dollar. We paid one dollar and could take a bunch of classes on various topics. And one of them was about architecture and um, looking at uh, your city in terms of the built environment. Um, and I really liked to draw and paint in high school and I thought, oh, this might be an interesting way to do some of that in a more practical way. So I took the class um, and I remember the teacher, Josh Weinstein, he had really crazy hair um, and just really sold me on this concept of architecture. Um, so I started with that as my major in college and then um, while I was in college, I, I really liked architecture, but I actually liked the spaces in between buildings more than the actual construction and details um, inside buildings. So um, with that, I decided to work more in planning and urban design. And then um, for grad school, I decided to do planning and landscape architecture. I think a little bit of physics um, was helpful. Um, I did have to take math up to calculus, and of course I don't, I don't really use that high level of math every day. Um, but what I do use is um, a lot of equations and um, kind of real estate cal calculations. So um, knowing those types of equations or how to use percentages um, to get the information that you need is, is helpful. Um, courses in um, software is like just Excel, Word, um, graphics programs like the Adobe Creative Suite, that's a great way um, to even take you know, photos that you might have on your phone and kind of put them into a program and explore how you can manipulate them. Um, and I would actually say in terms of communication writing, any courses that will help you to write more um, and write concisely, not really long essays, but actually write clear and concisely um, is really helpful. Um, we do a lot of writing in my job as part of communication, and um, it's not long pieces because no one can read you know, essays of things anymore, but um, just really uh, quick to the point um, summaries is a, is a good skill to have. I do a lot of engagement. Um, I answer a lot of questions from community members who have um, questions on projects I'm working on. Um, sometimes I'll be doing mapping and GIS um, on the projects that I'm working on as well. Um, some graphic design in terms of um, uh, graphically communicating timelines or um, work programs or scopes of work that I'm doing. There's different ways uh, I think landscape architects use their skills. Some um, do very detailed drawings and cons you know, uh, site construction and some um, do more uh, kind of wider, take a wider view and do more planning and policy work which is where I, I currently am working in. Um, but we have uh, even in cities, there's, um, we have staff, I have staff that um, are trained landscape architects and work on public improvement projects within the city. So whether it's um, a streetscape redesign or a new park or a temporary park, um, uh, we also have landscape architects that do that type of work as well. Um, and I also engage with a lot of architects um, and planners, of course. Um, but also a lot of engineers, um, and not just civil engineers, but environmental engineers, um, people who really know a lot about water um, and water science and stormwater um, issues as well. Um, I also work a lot with transportation planners and engineers, which is um, very different than the environmental side of things. Um, and uh, a lot of public administration people as well in the city. When I'm planning meetings or community engagement um, uh, efforts and I see a wide variety of people at those meetings from young families um, to older citizens to um, just um, culturally diverse people attending those meetings, I know I've done my job really well.